Uh, first talk is entitled as uh, PCBS did it, uh, PBSD on the desktop by the not Landy, but uh, from the IF system. So please. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank Sato-san and George and the rest of the Asia BSDCon organizers for inviting us out. We have a, uh, a little free BSD table and we brought some, some uh, goodies like little, little beasties you can put in your pocket and walk around Tokyo and scare people with. Um, any BSD committers come on up and we have t-shirts for you at no cost uh, for free just to say thank you. Uh, this is uh, FreeBSD on the desktop. I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a Oops. I'm lucky enough to have Chris Moore, the founder of the PCBSD project here. So really, I don't know why I'm giving this talk, Chris. Um, who am I? My name is Matt Olander. I've been working with, uh, with BSD since 1998 when I uh, uh, installed a, a BSD OS installation at a little server company in San Jose, California called Telenet System Solutions. Later on, I ended up working full time there and uh, they eventually got acquired by BSDI. And so I went on to, to continue working there. <sighs> BSDI sold their software assets to Wind River and the hardware company lived on uh, with a group of employees that, that bought it out and eventually changed our name back to IX Systems. And now we're, we're very involved trying to support the, the FreeBSD project as well as the other BSDs. I'm on the FreeBSD marketing team. Some would say I don't do enough for that. And of course I do some PCBSD project management as well. So I, people ask us a lot of uh, times why did we do PCBSD. Chris can give you a, a really good answer about how he wanted to convert his mom. <laughs> and and uh, he tried actually to do this on Linux at first and Linux is such a, a fragmented mess that it was much easier for him to turn to BSD and focus on one uh, core project. Uh, the other reason I usually give is, is because Chicks dig BSD, as you can see. Uh, that's that's PCBSD Babe. I don't know if you can read it, but her site is uh, PCBSDBabe.com, and she was a girl that installed PCBSD on one of the early releases and loved it so much she she started a blog, and uh, it's it's pretty entertaining. I won't I won't pull that up here. What is PCBSD? Whoa! I meant to delete that. I swear. Uh, PCBSD is, it is FreeBSD, this is not a fork. Uh, all we do is take the default FreeBSD operating system and add a graphical installer. Uh, you know, it's integrated with KDE and, and uh, Fluxbox right out of the box. And of course, we've got some tools that Chris and his team have written to make uh, some of the, the typical system configuration utilities a bit easier to use through GUI. And I'll, I'll be showing you some of those. The big claim to fame for PCBSD is a different package management system we call PBI. And this is a graphical method of installing, uh, say, like a FreeBSD port or more, more like a package in a binary format using a front end GUI that contains all of the dependencies of the package in one directory uh, so that we can save the, the package through upgrades and uh, make it very easy for other users to install. We're working very hard to integrate this more closely with FreeBSD's methodology of ports and packages. And uh, so far, Chris and his team have set up an auto-building uh, PBI server that, well, it's, it's semi-auto, right? Is that, it's, it's, pretty automatic. it's pretty automatic now. It takes a little manual configuration of a port, and then it tears through the port and generates the, uh, the PCBSD binary. And so now, whenever the port, how many are in there so far, Chris? Okay, great. Wow, that's awesome. So, I mean, you know, it's only a hundred, but really for a desktop use, uh, how many times, you know, how many applications are going to be useful for your average desktop user? Uh, power users, you know, that are familiar with FreeBSD can just drop in and install the port or package, so it's not a big deal. Um, so Chris and his team have, have set up scripts that tear through a uh, hundred ports so far, and whenever the port is updated, it'll automatically generate the new PCBSD binary and then it'll notify all of the PCBSD users with an annoying pop-up window. <laughs> Updates are available. Now, can you, you can turn that up, that, okay, of course you can turn that off. So, you know, the goal here is to make it easier uh, for people to, to use 
FreeBSD that are new to it especially. Uh, I think the majority of the PCBSD community, as I look at the forums and talk to people, uh, is Windows users. So we're getting a lot of Windows users coming over. I think now we're getting a lot of Linux people coming over that, uh, you know, they like Linux, but they've tried, you know, 20 different flavors and, and they start to realize something's wrong. Uh, so we're now at PCBSD 1.5, which includes uh, XORG 73358. Actually, you already up, you already bumped up to like a 151, right? Not yet. Uh, oh, when I get back. Okay, as soon as we get back. He's been working on that at the hotel. Um, we have a new system updater tool that upgrades your PCBSD system um, on the fly. How's, how's that work, Chris? So you get notified, there's an update. I, I got a call from my office, in fact, yesterday that they had done that. And uh, the, the K-mail problem, right, that I'll have to look into. Um, but it just notifies you, and then you can download an ISO, or you can, or you can just download no, a patch. It notifies you, downloads, and applies the patch to your system. Brilliant. Right on the fly. Okay, and of course, now we have a Wi-Fi tool, which is really cool. It'll uh, scan, and you just double-click on a network and enter your WPA or web key, and, and uh, it'll remember these. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we've got uh, improvements to the PBI removal to tool, which is very similar to uh, add remove programs for, from Windows. So I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, new sound detection program. So, uh, and, and we now finally have an AMD64 build as of, as of PCBSD 1.5. So actually, uh, you can follow along in, in your slides, but I'm, I'm going to drop out of this and show you the, the actual installation. It's like a cooking show. <laughs> okay, so here's our first screen after a very typical looking uh, FreeBSD bootstrap. And we have the different languages and of course uh, the keyboard layout. And, and we do have Japanese, and I believe Chris already installed the Japanese version, is that right? So you've got it running upstairs on the laptop? Oh, right here, okay, awesome. I would have done that, but then I wouldn't be able to read anything. Uh, we default to allow submitting an, uh, usage statistics to BSD stats. And uh, the reason we do that is so that when I go to talk to companies like Adobe to persuade them to give us a, a native Flash 9, which, uh, Kirk, there's already a, a beta out there. Um, this, this gives me a place I can point them to to start to persuade for the business case of them supporting uh, BSD natively, and I think we're really close to seeing that this year. I think desktop BSD are, I guess you could call them our competitor, although we don't, we don't really compete. Um, in fact, we collaborate a bit. Uh, they just now started defaulting to allowing the statistics, and I saw a big jump in their, in their BSD stats. Here's the license agreement, and, and basically all we have here is uh, the BSD license. Uh, some of the Intel firmware licenses, and uh, that's about it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and agree. Here's where I can do a fresh install or update my existing system. The update basically, uh, Chris, how's the update work? It pars up the user's home directories. Yeah, it preserves your home directories yeah. and preferences, and then it updates the system. Right. And, and we've done it many times at work so far, so it works pretty pretty darn well. <laughs> so there you see, I, I didn't enter them correctly, I was just testing that. Now the passwords match up. I go ahead and enter a, a default user. You can choose your, your shells here. And uh, Chris has added bash as a default as well because uh, a lot of the Linux users seem to prefer bash. Here's where I can toggle auto login. Uh, Windows people, they're used to it. 
Here's your partitioning. Uh, Chris has changed the partitioning a little bit. We used to have something where you could actually go in and, and really tweak the partitioning and, and people were breaking things. And so right now you've got that kind of kind of turned off for now. Oh, so now you, you can still do that, okay. What about, uh, what about adding a partitioning tool? Something that, yeah? We've talked about it. It's, it's dangerous, <laughs> it's really dangerous. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm, I'm actually on a Mac, I'm just gonna use this entire disk, but I could customize it and go set up my own partitioning scheme. Chris, when are you gonna bring back the server edition? When we have enough yeah, tools to yeah, throw in? And I think once we had a server edition, we removed it, it just wasn't doing much yet. And uh, basically it just dropped you into a default Fluxbox install uh, with minimal tools uh, so that you could tweak it. Uh, once we bring that back, we'll have, uh, we'll have based on the uh, IX systems, the companies that, sp the, that sponsors me to come out here, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and throw together some default partitions that we see a lot of as we, uh, as we ship out servers and have them in there as an option for installing a web server or a mail server or DNS or what have you. This is cool. So now I can go ahead and choose add-ons and add them onto the system. It's a short list right now, but we've got some cool stuff. Uh, I grabbed the source and ports. We have a, a Opera uh, agreed within 48 hours when I asked them if, if we could ship with uh, their Opera binary. They said absolutely no problem. Uh, and Adobe agreed that we could ship with Flash. And so we do. If you select any of these, uh, I'll have to insert the, the second disk, so I'm going to go ahead and skip it. And then, there we go, very secure. So we'll let this cook. So now, like the cooking show, I put it in the oven, but I already have one finished. And so here's a finished PCBSD installation. This is very close to what you would see by default, although I've already installed a few things. Uh, noticeably, on the right, this is a very, uh, this is very, very cool when I show uh, Windows web developers uh, in particular love this. We can install what we call PAMP. I'm, I'm trying to come up with a better name, uh, but for now it's, it's PAMP. And that would, of course, be the Apache MySQL PHP stack. What's interesting is the uh, the guy, I don't know who wrote this for us. Someone did it for us, right? Oh, you did it? Oh, I do know the guy that did it. Um, I thought someone else did it originally. Did you update it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, this was great. I just took a class at, uh, at UC Santa Cruz and showed the teacher this, and so she had me show the entire class once I, once I showed her. In, in literally two clicks, we install uh, Apache PHP MySQL, and then we get uh, some nice little uh, icons to start and stop. We can, we can just instantly switch uh, the PHP versions, which they, you know, the web devs really liked for testing. And you get a little drop down to switch the version. Especially, uh, I noticed that even in this class, uh, these guys are, you know, they, they're CSS wizards and you know, XHTML wizards, uh, but they're, they're just, they've never seen a command line. And so everyone was looking at, you know, my, this is my Mac that I use for testing, but I have a PCBSD laptop as well for work. This is my personal Mac, uh, but for work I use my, my PCBSD laptop. And so I had that at the class, and I was able to, to share. Everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? And so I, I gave them a quick demo. And uh, you see here, we can put a little icon down in the tray that lets us, you know, easily start, stop, and monitor the services. Uh, for, for someone that's not familiar how these work, uh, we can even go in and, and edit the HT, httpd.conf or the PHP INI. And, and so this is just one of the, one of the 100 packages that, that we have building. And uh, this is a really cool one though. And then they can open the web brood and then open their personal web brood or toggle the, uh, the websites around. So a pretty clever tool for manipulating Apache, MySQL, and, and PHP uh, by the GUI. And it installs that, uh, that MySQL GUI admin tool that I've never used. What is that? Yeah, yeah, they love that stuff. Like everyone in the class knew what that was. I was like, what? Uh, now let me show you the big deal. 
This is a PBI that I downloaded off of uh, pbidur.com. So this is uh, this is the GIMP, and I'm gonna I'm gonna install it uh, on a on a very fresh installation. The icon you get in the upper left hand corner uh, says Get PBIs, and it goes direct. It just opens a Conqueror window directly to the website. I've been talking to Chris about maybe in the future having a, maybe grabbing a, a desktop ESD's port tool, having that on the tab, and then having a, a PBI add remove on, on the other tab so that you can just browse all the programs and either install a port, a package, or a PBI on one, uh, one single interface. So I'm going to install the GIMP. I'll agree to that nasty license. I love these graphics that, uh, that Gonzalez does. I'm gonna start it. Okay, and finish. And there you go. So we got the GIMP on there. And it created, of course, a, a menu icon in here as well, under the GIMP. So now I could uh, easily upgrade this. In fact, when the when the PBI gets updated, it will notify me, hey, there's a new GIMP. Do you want to download and install it right now? And you just click yes, and it downloads and installs and keeps your uh, your GIMP preferences or whatever the application preferences that you already have in there. And then since we're we're targeting mostly you know easy to use uh, uh, desktop operating systems specifically for Windows users, so we have a lot of familiar tools for them. So if you go into the, the start menu, you look at the settings, and here's my software, and there's that add and remove that I was telling you about. And so I'll go in and we'll remove it. So here's all the software I have installed. You can see the GIMP there. And really, since, since the GIMP, is really just installed in our own little directory structure here. So you can see the GIMP and all the all its libs are hiding in here. Oops. And that's the I don't know if you can see that, but it's the uh, the automatic directory structure created from the scripts that we're using on the auto building uh, server. And so I go ahead and, and click remove. And of course, really all this is doing is, is an RMRF on there. Bam, gone. And then a little script that you know pulls the icons out and notifies you that it's gone. Uh, we've got a services manager. This is actually PCBSD 1.4. But we've got 1.5 running upstairs. Because I didn't have any PBIs to show on 1.5. And so here, of course, anyone that's used Windows, you can see this looks very similar to uh, whatever that Windows tool is called. So we can start, stop services, or, or enable them at startup. And so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not like this can replace a system administrator, but it's sure, like I, I know everyone at, at our office runs it, of course, and uh, most of our family members now are running it. And, and uh, I was down at, a, at a, uh, the Luxor in Las Vegas, and so I was wearing my, my FreeBSD shirt, and I'm sitting at the pub, and the guy goes, you've heard of FreeBSD? And I go, yeah, dude. He goes, have you heard of PCBSD? And I thought it was really cool that this random bartender down in Vegas was telling me about PCBSD. I go, yeah, I've heard of that. He goes, we're running that at home, dude. It's cool. So I went up to the room and, and got some swag for him. He was so happy. Uh, we've got our own uh, user's tool. We've got the Wi-Fi tool. Um, why did we do our own user management manager tool up over the KDE one? The KDE one just had some options and didn't work right right okay. free Yeah, PC. yeah. The problem, you know, we're trying to get closer uh, closer involved with the KDE guys so that they test a little more on FreeBSD 
because we, we discovered some of their stuff just doesn't compile or, or work properly and, and we have to create a BSD specific tools for them. It'd be nicer if we had a little more collaboration there. Uh, there's your online update manager where I can go to have manually check for updates and, and install them. And I've got my uh, my network settings, which pulls up the Wi-Fi tool that's really easy to use. I don't think it'll pull up because it, my Mac doesn't uh, doesn't translate it, but it's pretty darn easy to use. Actually, this is the old one, huh? Yeah. We got the new one upstairs. It's it's even better. Almost done. Oh yeah, so we didn't see this yet. This is the X window configurator. And so this is really cool. If you've got a supported 3D graphics card, you can go ahead and, and select it here and uh, be running barrel literally at startup. So when we do trade shows, which is a uh, part of what I do to, to evangelize FreeBSD, uh, we bring along a, a 32 inch LCD and we throw PCBSD up there with barrel running and boy, just people go nuts over those, those windows. You know, the squares, the barrel stuff. I'm over it already, but. And there's the boot screen and, and the update manager already coming for an update. There's uh, looking for a new PBI update. So it's this was the test you were running for the Firefox one before you rolled it out. And so I was testing it, grabbing screenshots. And then it installed it and then uh, told me it was uh, finished. And sure enough, it fired right up, worked like, a, worked like a charm. So very cool, we just did this. In fact, the GIMP. And we removed it. So how can you help? Well, you could grab a CD today and install PCBSD. And certainly one of the biggest contributions any user can do is reporting bugs back to us. Uh, I noticed on our last one, I mean, people had reported that just a really small list of bugs. And I, and, but you control the forums, and they're complaining in there. So you'll go in and say, please report the bug, you know, where we'll see it. Because we can't be you know, trolling 10,000 posts every day. Uh, so that would be one way you could help. Documentations and translations. Uh, it'd be nice if a, a uh, I don't know who did our Japanese translation. Yeah, we don't even know. So it'd be cool if someone, you know, a Japanese native speaker could take a look at it and say, hey, there's some errors here. Because maybe it was, a, you know, a, a British or American guy that speaks Japanese and, and maybe he made some mistakes. Um, pass some CDs out, download them, tell your friends, uh, get your mom on it, and then prepare for all the phone calls. And, uh, and of course evangelize. If you can do CQT, shell programming, we can always use help there. Um, and you, you can just email, you know, the, uh, go, or go to the forums and go to the PCBSD website to see how to contact us. And uh, we have a, a core team list, very similar to, to FreeBSD's list. So you can, you can email the core team of PCBSD and everyone will see that. All right, so that, that's, uh, that's PCBSD in a nutshell. Does anyone have any questions? Because we have Chris in the room. Yes. Now, like, so the, in developing countries, most of the computer are in desktop. You know, it's an old computer. So, does this system have a driver for them to like some car? Well, this is this is FreeBSD six point three. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, FreeBSD supports uh, older hardware really, really well, from my experience. Any other questions? We have the, uh, the FreeBSD table upstairs, so stop on by uh, before I, I drink too much sake. Uh, what's the latest on, on BSD stats? I mean, you know, there's always a certain percentage of people that, that turn off the reporting for some weird reason. So I think this last month it was 10,000. Last month we had 10,000 installs. So, you know, how many of those keep? God, it's really hard to say, right? Yes? Uh, Max. Uh, two questions. I'm from I'm from Chinese. Uh, is there any PCBSD for Chinese or China? We have had people translated into Chinese. Like, yes. We are interested in this project okay. because uh, we have some 
we like as consumers, uh, we, we try to persuade them you PC this these best. This this is great. We would love to help you out, especially convincing Linux consumers. Can, can we join this piece? Yes, absolutely. We would love to have you. Uh, second question is, uh, uh, can PCBSD have a, a graphic uh, login interface like KDM? KDM. Yeah, it already, it already does. Yeah. It already does. It already does. Yeah, so on the install, you just uncheck auto login, and then it'll pull up with a, a customized KDM. Uh, final question. Is PCBSD uh, one disk is enough? Yeah, I just install off of off of this one disk. The second disk contains some, uh, optional. some yeah, some optional components as well as language translations. Yeah, you need the second disk if you want to install. If you want to, yeah, if you want to change language uh, during the install, you need the second disk. And then we contact you after the conference. Absolutely, I would, I would love it. Uh, we just had a school, an entire school district in France, switch over to PCBSD, so uh, we're doing a case study so that we can we can throw that up on the previous D site and stuff. Uh, they were ecstatic. I mean, Marie and the, and her, and the, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, they they're absolutely ecstatic, and they're like, "How can we help?" And so all the all the servers in the uh, city in France were already on FreeBSD. So when when they uh, the school district contacted them to talk about upgrading their Windows installs, they said, "Hey, why don't we do a test run with PCBSD and see how you guys like it?" And so they said the teachers and students loved it, and so they rolled it out, and then they rolled it out without any issues. So. Uh, we asked them, you know, I sent them a bunch of questions and uh, they responded, you know, what kind of issues did you have, how did you solve them, how are you going to do upgrades, and, and, and so on. And so uh, uh, the IX Systems Marketing Gal is, is synthesizing that into a case study that we'll, we'll release very shortly. Uh, thank you. We'll contact you after the conference. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, Jason. What about things like um, remote home directories? So, um, Take your school example. So students log in doesn't matter what PC they're logging into. They had the same home directory. Like a terminal server type deal? Well, not necessarily a terminal server, but more, I don't know. Let's say go down the Windows path. What, what do they call it? They call it a domain server. Yeah, like you where, where you now so it's all home free directory. under the hood, obviously. Yeah. You could yeah, I mean, we don't have any, any graphical tools right now for that, but obviously, you know, any previous DCS admin could, could make it, you know, sit up and beg. Um, what we are working on right now is some cool pixie stuff. So you'll be able to boot off of a live CD and then install you know, tons of machines right from that one installation. So that's pretty cool. Any other questions? Dot six. We're aiming for the end of the summer to base the first one off previous oh, seven. Ideally, we'd like to use a ZFS as well. Yeah, we get that in there. <laughs> K KD4 has a has a few bucks, <laughs> so I think we should probably wait for 4.1. But I've been reporting tons of them. Yes, at the one dot PCBSD one dot six will will uh, include and support ZFS with a uh, with a front end to it. No, I don't want to put you on the spot and and the jails. I don't want to put you on the spot. That'd be cool though. Okay, well come see us at the uh, at the table. Thank you very much. <laughs>